Hello? Derek. Yes. What's up, dude? Who's that? Oh, Kurt. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Hello? Hey, bud. Bro. What's up? Dude, what's up? Hey. Hey. Fuck, my phone's fucking up. Hey, did you get the boot off? Dude, mission accomplished. No way. Gnarly. What are you going to do if the cops show up? Dude, I don't know. Oh, dude, let me tell you what happened, bro. It was so fucking gnarly. What happened? Broad daylight, I break out. Little, imagine standing up, right? Uh -huh. These bolt cutters were were half my height, bro. For real? For real. From, the, from, from my foot, they went up to like right below my armpit. Holy fuck. Dude, they were so gnarly. These bull cutters had to have, bull cutters this big have to be registered with the FBI to own them. Holy fuck. Seriously. I had a friend of mine, well I told you about my friend down at the U-Haul. Yeah. They, they need those locks because they go, the, the, the government goes into those storage places, uh, Frequently, you know. Yeah. Sometimes people they auction off the shit, or if they think this guy's a drug dealer, they'll go in, you know. And they they need the bolt cutters there, so that's how they were authorized to have these big motherfuckers. Right. So I called my bro. He gave me a ride down there. These fucking things went like right below my armpit. They were that gnarly. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> so right. So I'm cruising down the street in broad daylight with these fucking with these uh with these uh this fucking uh these bolt cutters like slung over my shoulder you know like i'm carrying some skis or something mm -hmm. gnarly dude broad daylight didn't god damn it just a second So I just told this motherfucker I was going to beat him down. Hello? Hey. Dude, I just told this motherfucker I was going to beat him down. Who? I'm asking for Terry to look, to give me the 20 bucks that I paid for the bolt cutters, man. And and uh, and he won't even give it to me. So I'm just going to beat him down. For real? For reals. I go, get your pussy motherfucking ass over here. I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass straight out. No way. Yeah. Who was that? His that name's Terry, man. He parked in my... Listen to what happened. He parked in my spot last night, okay? You told me about that. And his fucking parents bought him his fucking car. Oh, the whole thing. The whole thing. And he's all nodding out on the couch, so he doesn't want to move his truck, okay? Is he a big heroin user? Yeah. No, I don't care. No, man, I'm going to beat him down. I go, get your motherfucking ass over here right now. I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass, man. Straight out. He goes, I'll get there when I get there. I go, fuck you, pussy, faggot, motherfucker. Get over here right now. I'm fucking out. I'm, I'm losing it. I'm going to beat him down. That's all there is to it. The guy parks in my fucking spot. I got to park out in the street, okay? And this motherfucker, and, and I broke laws, dude. I mean, I, fuck, who knows what's going to happen to me because I'm doing this shit. I'll probably end up going to jail, right? And all I'm asking for is the 20 bucks that I paid to get my fuck, to get these bolt cutters, man. These bolt cutters didn't come free. And he won't do it? And he won't do it. He said, I think you're wrong. And I didn't even want to get into the ex explanation thing about how I'm not wrong. I just said, okay, then I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass, get your pussy motherfucker at me. I'm just come on over right now. I'm just going to work him. I mean, I'm really going to hurt the motherfucker bad. <laughs> when, when I see him, I'm just going to say, hey, dude. Nah, nah, I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just gonna beat him down. Do you Solid. consider him a friend? What? Do you consider him a friend? I've known this guy since second grade. Really? Yeah. Maybe you should like 
cool out for a little bit and then t try to talk to the guy some more, you know? What's the, the point? Seems like the guy's got the money, you know? What's the point? Yeah, but he spends it all on drugs. Why should he? Is he going to give me 20 bucks, man, when, he's, when he can send, spend that same money on crack? So you drove up, he's in your spot, he won't move, you get booted because of it, and he won't pay you for a fucking pair of bolt cutters. Exactly. That's fucking retarded. Oh, it's, it's beyond. Dude, I'm, I didn't even want to get into that. I'm beating him down. That's all there is to it. That's who was on the other line. I just lost my mind. I was screaming. Just get your motherfucking ass over here. I, I mean, it, I'm going to tell you straight up. From second grade to right now, I fought this guy about 200 times. Really? Literally. And I've lost three of those times. I've put this motherfucker in, in the hospital before. I mean, it's not a problem. I will beat him senseless. I mean, I'll destroy the motherfucker, and I'll do it. And I'm going to, and he, be, you know, it's not about anything other than that. All he got out of his mouth was, and you want me to pay the 20 bucks? I said, yeah, bro. I said, listen, I broke laws because of you. Kurt, I got chased by the police, man, today because of this shit. No way. Dude, I'm, that's what I was about to get into the story about what fucking happened. What happened? I fucking snapped the lock on the on the on the um, on the uh, on the thing, right? On the boot, yeah. Made the gnarliest sound, dude. It was fucking crazy, bro. I summoned the power of all the gods, dude. I mean, it took every ounce of my strength to get this fucking lock off, man. Gnarly. And uh, fucking made the gnarly sound, dude. I threw the bolt cutters in the front seat. Threw the fucking. Uh, I took the boot off, threw the boot in, the tr in my trunk, and got in my car and bolted, dude. Fucking a cop fucking hooks a left coming straight at me I'm all damn I take my hat off I cruise I hook a right homie hooks a Yui turns back around follows me I go zigzagging all throughout all these streets I hide in this fucking parking lot and hide out homie drives right by me no way dude it was so gnarly man <laughs> if I would have gotten busted with these bolt cutters dude I would have gone down bro big time and the guy that had uh, given me the bull cutters would have seriously gone down. Far, man, he, he, his boss would have said, hey, man, where's these bull cutters at? Well, uh, 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 you know, yeah. it takes a lot of shit just to be able to get bull cutters like that. And he would have lost his fucking job, man. So I was like, damn, dude. So I bolted, got away, man, fucking went, returned the bull cutters, came back. Well, dude, you've gotten fights with police before, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, you got a fucking warrant for your arrest for, like, assaulting a cop in, where was it? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Fuck, man, you better be careful. Tell me about it, man. I go, look, Terry, I go, all I want, man, I go, look, I broke laws. Who knows what's going to happen because of this, this is him, dude. I, I swear to God, I'm going to go off. Just a second. Yeah. So I'm just going to work the motherfucker. I mean, that's all there is to it. Was that him? No. Fuck no. Fuck, man. I, I wish it was, man. Just, I just, all I had to, anyway, so then the, so then the guy goes to me. So, I mean, all, here's what, so I go, look, dude. I go, look, who knows what's going to happen to me for this fucking shit, man. You know, and last night I told him. Last night I told him, listen, you're going to have to move because I'm going to get the boot if you don't. He goes, oh, man, oh, fuck, man. I'll just move tomorrow, bro. Can't you just park on the street tonight? I go, hey, dude, you got registrations on your tags, man. I don't. I says, man, I'll get the fucking boot, man. You can park on the street. I can't, man. He goes, oh, man, just one night. It ain't going to mean shit. I go, okay, dude, but, you know, just don't park there again, man. Fuck, dude. You know, you got the, you got the truck. You got the fucking tags, man. What's up? But I got to park on the street, man. At least you got it off, man. You know what you should do? What? Take, have, are the bow cutters returned? Yeah. Okay, cool. So all you got to do, man, is fucking, man, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. But bottom line is, I'm going to get in some shit for this, you know, straight out. And all I want is 
the 20 bucks I paid for them bolt cutters. Eventually, me taking this log off is another charge, is another crime. Is it? Fuck yeah! Where's my, where's my thing? Oh, here it is. And this is it right here. Warning, do not move this vehicle. It says here, uh, see, removing the device or moving the vehicle by any means or in any manner prior to official release by Parking Violations Bureau constitute a separate and additional offense. Okay? So, I mean, there you have it, Dean. You know, that's, that's tampering with government property. Fuck them. Right? Yeah, I, well, I know that, but my point is this. All my point is is this. Fine, that's cool. Look, we'll, we'll be friends for life, dude. All I want is the 20 bucks I paid for the bolt cutters to get the motherfucker off. There's no reason why I should pay that. You know? And, uh, you know, I mean, that's just straight up. And, uh, and, and it, what if I wasn't able to get it off? Dude. Then my car would be fucking gone forever. My life would be ruined. Then Why? Because you're, cause you're on the nod and you can't get up to move your fucking car? No, dude, you know, luckily I got... Because then I would beat him. Then it wouldn't matter. Then I would just beat him and it, there wouldn't even be a discussion. But, but, but no, man, I was able to get the car, uh, you know, the, the boot off, thank God. And all I want is the 20 bucks that it cost me. Not to mention all day stressing out, right? And the motherfucker says, no, that's, you're wrong. I'm not going to give you the money. I, fine. I'm going to beat your fucking face in. Just where are you? Come the fuck over right now. I mean, when he arrives in the pad, dude, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, dude, oh, my God. It's not even going to be funny. Does he live there? Yeah, he lives here. Holy fuck, man. No, oh, it's not even going to be funny, dude. It's not even going to be funny. I mean, I'll kill him, maybe. Seriously. I'm, no, I'm going to. I'm, I might actually. I just, I'm going to. Yo, know, dude. I wish, wish the motherfucker would hurry up and get the fuck on over here, because he don't know what's up with me. Dude, don't fucking, like, try to cool off a little bit, maybe. You know, that's bullshit, man. Hey, I want to ask you something, man. I don't mean to change the subject. Oh, so no, but let's roughly. go ahead. What? Um, what do I need to get by Merciful Fate to, to like, Get Melissa. <laughs> introduced to that band. Okay, real quick, Melissa. Is that like the gnarly fucking... The Insane. What was that song you were t telling me about earlier? Dude, they've got all kinds of songs, man. Trip out on this song, dude. The first song on Melissa tells you straight up what's up with the band, dude. I was born at the cemetery under the sign of the moon, dug up from my grave by the dead. I was made a mercenary in the legends of hell. Now I'm king of pain. I'm insane. And he's all, my only pleasure is to hear you cry. And then he's all, I love to hear you cry. And I love to feel you die. And when you're down below the ground, I'll dig up your body again and make love to shame. You know, when you're down below the ground, up your body. Oh, this might be him. Just a second. So I'm really seriously deciding what I should do. Is that him? Yeah, I'm really seriously deciding what I should do, man. He's telling me that that here's what here's his offer he'll give to me. I'll pay you for half of the money it costs for the bolt cutters because it's your fault because you got all the tickets. And I said, listen, dude, you're full of fucking shit. He goes, well, if you wouldn't have gotten the boot today, you would have gotten it some other time, and you can't hold me responsible. I said, that makes sense in your little fucked up mind, but reality is, if you wouldn't have parked in my spot, if you wouldn't have spent every dime you had on fucking crack, man, and you weren't all fucked up on heroin, man, you could have gotten up and moved your fucking car, and I wouldn't have got the boot today. You are responsible for me getting the boot, okay, period, man. And, you know, hey, dude, and he goes, well, what would happen if you had the boot and you got, you got the boot put on down and down? Who would you have blamed then? I go, I would have blamed me, man. But the point is, is you know you're responsible, man. And he goes, well, that's my offer I gi I'm giving you, and that's all there is to it. I said, Terry, let me tell you something real quick, bro. Real fucking quick. Luckily, I got the boot off my car, 
okay? Because if my boot was still on my motherfucking car and I could not get it off and my car was gone and my life was ruined because of you and your fucking drug addiction, I'd put you in the motherfucking hospital. And if you don't think I can do it, man, bring your pussy fucking ass over here and you'll see how quick you'll wind up there. He's like, well, why don't you do it then? Why don't you fucking do it? I go, bro, bring it on, man. Get come the fuck on over here, bro. I said, you know what, man? I said, all I'm asking for is the 20 bucks that I paid for those fucking bolt cutters, and you won't give it to me, man. And that's fucking bullshit, man. And he goes, he goes, well, it's not my fault you got all the tickets, man. You know? Yeah, that's true, but that ain't the way that it is, dude. I mean, if, if you hadn't parked in my spot, I wouldn't have gotten the boot. It's as simple as that, man. Yeah, that's fucking simple, man. I mean, you know. That's just reality. That seems like, I mean, why is that hard to understand? You know, it's like, basically. I'm, I'm, so now I'm deciding, should I just beat him down? I just don't even know. I don't know, man. I don't think fucking violence is the key to anything, you know. I'm losing it, man. I mean, I thought the guy would be more than glad to pay me the 20 bucks, you know. Well, maybe, you know, shit. Just cool out. Talk to the guy. He'll probably pay you the 20 bucks. You know? I just did talk to him, and he told me he, he didn't feel he was responsible for uh, for my parking tickets, which is what he thinks is, is the reason why I got the boot, you know, which I guess in that you know sense, yeah, that's true. But, you know, he parked in my spot, man. I told him the movie was on the nod. He couldn't move, and that's bullshit. That's total bullshit, man. You know, I, I just tell the world. If the whole world told me I was wrong, I'd say that's fine. But if I had my boot on my car right now and I could not get that motherfucker off and I knew my car was going to be towed in three days and I'd have no way to get to work and all that other bullshit, I would, be, I would probably kill Terry. I would beat him so severely, I would probably lock him in a closet and steal his car. I mean, something really psychotic like that. He's got no fucking clue. All I want is 20 bucks, man. <clears throat> you know, to pay for them bolt cutters. Dude, my advice to you is don't fucking drive until you go to work Friday. Seriously, because if you get stopped in that car, you're fucked. Man, I just feel like killing the motherfucker. Now I'm thinking about it. I mean, what a prick, man. You know? Yeah. Gail, the owner of the house, told him not to park there. The, the people across the street told him not to park there. I asked him to move his car. He was too much on the fucking nod. You know? You know, it's bullshit, man. And you've been your bro since second grade. Second man. fucking grade, man. Shit. And, you know, I don't care, Dude, man. sometimes I, that happens, you know, like... I don't care if I've known him my whole life, man. Motherfucker, you know, his little fucking drug bullshit, man. You know, it's, 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 hey, man, you know, shoot heroin in your jugular all day long, man. That's cool. But when your fucking heroin addiction and your fucking drug addiction affects my life, dude, hey, man, no, fuck that, dude. Fuck that. You know, that's wrong, dude. He says he's going to give me 10 bucks, man. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that, man. You know, I'm thinking I'm just going to tell him, look, give me 20 or, or we're boxing, dude. Straight up. I mean, fuck, what's he going to think when he's, when he's wearing a TV for a fucking hat, you know? I mean, I, this, man, I, you know, it's, it, it, could get, it could get really stupid, man, with this guy. I mean, I could really fuck him up bad. What's he going to think, man, then, you know? I mean, doesn't he realize that I got the boot on my car because of him? Doesn't he feel fucking responsible in some way? Huh. He's looking at it like, why well, I got all the tickets. Well, yeah, it's true, but... I mean, it is true. But, I mean, how can I explain it to him that that's not the point? Well, it sounds like... It sounds like Terry's a pretty selfish guy, man. I don't know. Well, you know, he's never worked a day in his life. His parents have given him everything, and, you know, he doesn't understand. He goes, yeah, man, he goes to me, yeah, I know what you're going through. This is last week when we got into an argument about something. I said, bro, you don't know shit. I said, I was out on the streets when I was 14 years old, suffering in a motherfucking alley while you were living in a fucking mansion north side Santa Monica. You will never understand what I'm going through, bro. You know? I mean, hey, man, fuck, you know? He OD'd on fucking crack or some bullshit, had a heart attack or some bullshit like that. What did his parents do? Oh, sent him to the most expensive drug rehabilitation in the fuck, probably in California. Now he's back. You know, and, oh, yeah, well, no, he's, they sent him back to the same spot two more times. You know what would happen if I OD'd on a drug, which I have done before? You think my parents would give a fuck? Which drug have you OD'd on? Fuck, man. 
basically I fucking OD'd on PCP. Yeah. Uh, on at that, all, all, at the all Alice time. Cooper show, right? What? At that Alice Cooper no, show? No, that was LSD. I almost died. That was that was just from my head injury. I'm talking about like just dying from drugs alone. You know, it was PCP every time. Huh. Dude, PCP's gnarly when you almost OD on that shit. What was it? What, what happened? It's scary, man. It's real scary. You feel your life slipping. There's no denying, man. It's not a hallucination. It's not a, your imagination. It's happening. You know. And I came out of it, man, very fortunately. Dude, dude I found uh, the Forum Jimmy Page concert. Madness. On bootleg. Fucking madness. Anyway, Melissa, dude. Melissa. He goes, he goes, in this song, he goes, uh, he goes, um, um, dude, it's just, every song is, is the insane lyrics, dude. I mean, seriously, like, dude. Like, more insane than, like, Celtic Frost? Well, I've got, here's, I've got it figured out. Because, you know, like, Mick will give you his little synopsis about what he thinks about all these bands, and really it's wrong. Because Mick's not really into this music like I am. You know, he's into, like, Gary Moore, Michael Monroe, all these other people that I'm really not into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I know Mick has talked shit about King Diamond, and, I mean, I don't mean to bag. Actually, I've told him straight to him. He has no clue what he's talking about. King Diamond is hardcore satanic. It's hardcore as they get. Um, you know, he was saying that he read something in a magazine that said that King Diamond uh, didn't know anything about Satanism. What? Him and fucking Anton LaVey are tight bros from way back when. And, uh, anyway, but that's neither here nor there. This is facts, dude. The most hardcore, anti-Christian band of all time is Deicide. That's for sure. How, you think so? It, when it comes down to straight-up hate, straight-up hate for Christians and, and all that's good, Deicide takes the cake. No question. If you really read Deicide's lyrics, it doesn't get any more insane. Um... Are you a big fan of their music? Yeah, I love the aside. They're a little bit sloppy, but their anger and their fucking and their and their their aggro is is uh, is there, man. You know, and their lyrics are way intense. Their lyrics are fucking super super hate filled, man. Just real bad. Uh, uh, Morbid Angels. So that's the aside. The Morbid Angels trip is conjuring up demons. They're totally out of the Necronomicon, totally. For real? Oh, oh yeah, for real, for, especially when you read the book and then you read their lyrics. They're, they are conjuring up those demons. Basically, they're taking spells out of that book, or they're taking demons out of that book and working it into a song that basically conjures up th th these demons, man. Holy shit. Oh, dude, it's way insane. That's gnarly, man. Dude, trip out on this, dude, just one second. Case in point, right? Case in point. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, dude. This is this is more of an angel, one of the ultimate bands of all time. Right here, dude. Rise through the gate, Iksakov. Okay, Iksakov is a serpent demon out of the Necronomicon that guards one of these gates. And one of the signs of, of uh of the end, bro, of, of the apocalypse, is when Iksakoth breaks through the gate, right? Mm -hmm. So the first lyrics in the song is, Rise through the gate, Iksakoth, from the depths beyond the sky, the realm of evil gods. Painful, they eat your mind. Evil, undisguised, breathe in pain, blackened souls remain. Ghouls who pray to the death of God. Destroy Jehovah's Church, vomit upon the cross, and burn the book of lies. Yog Sokoth, evil one, that's another demon. Come forth and taste the blood. Infant entrails are hung upon the twisted cross. Dude, these guys are out there. This is the insane. This is when I go, whoa. I read the book Necronomicon, and I was like, these guys are out there. Churning Sea of Absu. The Sea of Absu is basically the, 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 um, the, the, 
the sea of Atsu is basically the, the vastness between the stars and between the planets, just that black nothingness out there. Yeah. It's space, man. That's that's the sea of Atsu. Churning sea of Atsu, which is a, a demon in and of itself. Place of weeping death. Tiamat, dark serpent. Tiamat, man, is the is is uh, it's a female demon. Basically, in the, in the book, there's the ancient gods, which are kind of good gods, and there's and I mean the elder gods, which are good gods, and the ancient ones, and even uh, the mad Arab, as crazy as that motherfucker is, he says it is against all laws to worship the ancient ones. The elder gods are our friends, and we can use the ancient ones in certain spells. But it would be best to avoid them altogether because they are evil. And Tiamat is the is the is the one demon that's right below um, Cthulhu, who is the master of all. He is the sleeping giant of all of the evil ancient ones, and they're going to rise up and fight the elder gods again. And supposedly our minds are made of the elder gods, but our soul is made of Kindu, which is the slain serpent of the ancient ones. And it's, oh, dude, it's gnarly. But anyway, churning sea of Atsu, place of weeping death, Tiamat, dark serpent, lord of the morbid priests, enraged with hate for God, the priest of chaos, chant, from the book of the worm, they burn the symbols of Christ. We spit on the virgin lamb and mock the words he spoke. His way is not worthy of me. We choose to burn in the pits of hell. This is more of an angel, bro. Wreckers of death and havoc, inflicting never-ending pain. Sing the words of emptiness, formulas of death. Call the queens of hell and the gods of the dead. The sea of Absu rolls, rising spirit of Nar Maktu which is another insane demon from fucking the ancient ones. Bow down before the master and pray to the feet of God dog. Prayer of the ensnares, blind fiends of chaos rule. Rise up, O powers of the sea, in the name of the Absu I call. Come and carry my curse to the ones who cause me disgust. May they burn in my cauldron, for they are as molten wax. Burn, consume their powers, so mote it be. Liars in wait, which is another term that they use a lot in the Necronomicon. Liars in wait, which is the, the ancient ones waiting for their time to break through the gate. Liars in wait, priests of the night, make images to burn by the moon. Robbing the spirit, raping God's laws, send up your hate to burn heaven's gate. To break through the gate, bro. You ever seen those guys? Yeah, I saw them at the fucking, uh, I saw them at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, the whiskey. How was it? Well, I was very disappointed, and I'll tell you why. Trey Zagthoff, who's the uh, lead guitarist and wrote most of the lyrics, was sick. So there was only three members there, bass player, singer, uh, guitar. There's two, Trey Zagthoff's the lead guitarist. So there was Richard Brunel, uh, David Vincent, who's the insane vocalist. But basically, okay, Zagthoff is the insane demon. He's supposedly the blind... Uh, uh, mad, uh, he, uh, in the book, the Necronomicon, he said, do not ever call upon a Zagthoth, because a Zagthoth is within rage. He is, he is, he is totally mad and uncontrollable, and I have never called upon this demon, nor will I ever. Well, this guy, uh, Does it tell you how to call upon him? Well, this is through the book. This is through the Necronomicon. Basically, the lead guitarist of this band took his name from a, the insane demon that you're told never to call upon. So, now, this demon's name is a Zagthoff, and that's what he chose as his last name. And then he said Trey. His name's Trey Zagthoff. His first name is Trey, which is three. So it's three Zagthoff, you know. Yeah. It's, it's pure madness, dude. He wrote all these lyrics, dude. Anyway, he wasn't there. So basically, the spiritual... You know the spiritual member of the band. I mean, this guy comes on stage. He fucking he cuts pentagrams in his arm and shit, and sucks the blood off his arm and spits into the crowd. You know, shit like that. So, <laughs> so the driving force of the band was not even there. Huh? Exactly, the spiritual leader of the band was not there. The man who wrote the lyrics, which of course, as you know, is basically the the leader of the band, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know. I mean, the lyrics is what makes a band a band, and, and Trey Zagthoff wasn't there, so there you have it. I mean, fuck, I saw Iron Butterfly without Doug Ingle. They sucked. When Doug's there, it's insanity. Why? Because he's the spiritual founder of the band. He's the basis for what that band is. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, 
Well, dude, I'll fucking, we gotta go see fucking... To merciful fate. Oh, here's what it is. Just in a nutshell, I'm fucking rambling because I can't believe, you know, this motherfucker really has pissed me off. But anyway, Morbid Angel's whole trip is conjuring up demons to, to, for, the, for, for the apocalypse, man. Uh, Deicide is straight up hate for everything, man. And a lot of these bands kind of blend in together. There were lyrics in here that you would really think were filled with hatred, and they are. But just Deicide, kind of, that's their little niche. It's just straight hatred. Uh, merciful fate is full-blown Satanism. This is, this Morbid Angel is out of the Necronomicon. Merciful fate is straight out of the Satanic Bible. He follows Anton LaVey religiously. They're good friends, man. And uh, he, as a matter of fact, in the article I read in the magazine yesterday when I found out they were back together, he was telling everyone who had, had, it was reading this article to, to get the, uh, the, the, the Satanic Bible and to read it. Dude, you got to tell me again, how in the fuck do you think that the Grateful Dead are Satanists? I know they are. I don't think it. I know it. I think they're, they're one of Satan's key tools. you got to remember that music is an extremely powerful tool that people don't realize. I mean, you'll hear a song on the radio that you don't even fucking like, but it sticks in your head all day. And it brainwashes you. And when you've got songs like this song that I've just read to you over the phone, yeah. stuck in your mind, which many times it will stick in my mind, it poisons your mind. And, it, and it, your, your soul ends up, uh, you know, being affected. And uh, so, anyway, the bottom line is this. The grateful, and let me finish this up. So, Merciful Fate's full-blown Satanists. Uh, uh, all these bands basically are, but they all have their own little niche. Merciful Fate's Satanists to the bone. More, more of the angels fully into the Necronomicon and, and actually conjuring up demons, and they're into witchcraft big time. Uh, uh, Deicide. Deicide's filled with major hatred for fucking everything that's good, man. And uh, and Celtic Frost is, is, is basically, uh, they come from the theory that death is, is a good thing and, that, uh, and that, that life is the enemy, you know? And, uh, man, they're hard fucking core, too, dude. Very hardcore. But Grateful Dead is, sat is major satanic, man. And people don't even realize it. Are you there? I'll be right back. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, that might have been me. Oh, okay. Anyway, fuck these motherfuckers. Oh, hang on one sec. All right. Hey. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm not going to get it. Okay. So bottom line is this, just Reader's Digest. I mean, there's a million things that I could, like, say. Just look at their symbols, dude. Really analyze their symbols, man. Um, put it this way, the Blues for Allah. Blue, do you know that symbol, the Blues for Allah? Yeah. It's that violinist. Mm -hmm. That's a remake of a violinist called, uh, uh, oh, God, I remembered his name a long time ago. It's something with a P. Uh Paganino or something like Paganini. That. Paganini. Yeah. And he was the first musician. He was the first known musician openly sold his soul to the devil. He admitted it. And uh, have you heard about this guy? Yeah, I've got sheet music by him. Okay, yeah. He is the first musician to have openly sold his soul to the devil, to have made no bones about it. And he... Uh, He's the fastest man alive. Yes. And did you hear about the way that he died? There's thousands of people that saw him die, and they said it was amazing. And they took, they, and all of them concur that this is what happened. Like, ghosts. He died during one of his performances. No way. Yeah, and ghosts came up out of the, uh, out of the ground and carted him off, dude. Fuck, I'm dying to piss. Hang on, okay? Okay. Yo. Thanks for holding, man. Yeah, no problem, dude. I'm fucking blown away. Now they, now they think he stole the golf clubs out of the pad. Out of whose hat? This pad right here. No shit. Yeah, dude. And they're fucking pissed. So, I, you know, I just told them, look, I might put the motherfucker in the hospital, man. You know, I don't know. I, you know, all I can say is I got the boot because this son of a bitch, and fuck this motherfucker, you know? I told him, I said, because of your drug habit, man, you're affecting my life. No, fuck that. I might just, I don't know. I, and the more I think about it, the more I rate I get. I might just kill the motherfucker. I don't know. I mean, I've beat the guy so many fucking times. I've literally pounded his head in so many times, man. 
literally, he'll even admit it. We fought like 200 times, and I've and I've and I've lost three of those. I mean, imagine a pounding the dude like 190 times throughout my lifetime. I fought the dude literally like every day in school for years. And you guys are still bros? Yeah, pretty much. Because what happened is at the end of and me and him uh, fought. Ten people from another school, just me and him, and we won. And that was like a gnarly bonding between me and him, man. Because when, when, when the fight was over, uh, we looked at each other, and we were the only ones standing, bro. And, and, and fu- literally ten other people were fucking knocked out on the ground, man. And we shook hands, and that's when we became way tight. Because, you know, we were total bros. And, um, but hey, man, I don't care. You know, I don't care, man. I mean, you know, I... Fuck, as far as I'm concerned, man, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll beat the fool again. I, you know, I don't know. But what were we talking about? Dude, fuck, man. I don't know, but you got to hear this page um, boot. Sounds Dude, awesome. tell me about it. I've got to hear it. <laughs> it's raging. Raging. Endless, Matt. I was there. Total tear, man. Dude, it's one of the greatest displays in guitar in the history of rock and roll. I know, man. And I was there. I didn't dose that night, but a lot of my friends were on acid that night. Oh, I was flipping. I was flipping on doses. Yeah. I was out of control on acid. <laughs> Dude, it was the insane, it was beyond words insane. All right, stack that against Robin Trower at the coach house. Honestly? Yeah. Honestly, Robin, here's what it is. I'll just tell you right now, Richie Blackmore put on the most insane guitar display that I probably will ever see. Idiot to form Rainbow. Mm-hmm. Pat Travers was backing him up. I doubt I will ever see anything close to that. David Gilmore, 83, his solo tour down in Irvine, and also in 87 with Pink Floyd, mm-hmm. is second. So you can imagine how hard they went off. And, uh, and Paige is third. And, uh, but... But really, it's hard to say. They're just, they all three, I caught them all three going off so fucking hard, man. That, but it's just my own personal style. Yeah. Blackmore took the cake. Gilly second. Page third. Trower fourth, dude. Trower, Trower had such insane power this night, dude, that I saw him. He was like, dude. he was like fucking... Dude, how could I really describe what I was seeing? It was power. Like, like you know how you would describe, like, Paige is ripping insanity? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The speed with the overflow hitting the nitrous tank, like, every 15 minutes? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fucking, I would describe, like, Robin Trower as power. Just serious, like, one-noting you to the ground with a fucking jackhammer. Just hitting these gnarly, bending, twisting notes, screaming wah-wah pedal, just fucking blazing through your ears, just <laughs> feedback, just, just searing your fucking mind, bro. I mean, dude, Trower was beyond words insane. Gilmore, dude, the only way I can describe Gilmore is this. Listen to dogs. Listen to the solo on Dogs. You know the song? Yeah, fuck yeah. I, I'd imagine. Listen to that solo on Dogs and times it by like 10 or 20. And turn up the volume by like 50. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. To where he hits that... You know that one part that I'm talking about? Yeah. That Dude, he was flowing that shit, man. Doing loop-de-loops, man. I mean, just solos that came out of nowhere that you weren't even expecting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To where you're, you, you, like, he'll be throwing you fucking loops and curveballs and screwballs, and you'll be expecting this sound, and he'll come off with some totally off the wall and fucking just, I mean, he was he was bending those strings, fucking ripping just this slow, teeth-grinding fucking face fucking in his face was like so intense. I mean, his he, dude, his foot, dude. I don't know if he moved his feet once, bro. I mean, to tell you the truth, I, honestly, he did. But he just stood there, and the look on his face—he was just, bro, just, oh, dude, just, 
Look, man, I'll never forget. 83 on front row, literally front row. His rhythm guitarist is Mick Ralphs, fucking Moth the Hoople and Bad Company. Yeah. They fucking stare, they face each other off, dude, trading off solos. And this wasn't, this was, this was ad lib, dude. This wasn't staged, I know, because I was tripping on acid and I sensed it. I was there. Mick Ralphs takes off his guitar, dude. And they keep in mind, this is Mick Ralphs. He's a legend in his own right, dude. Fucking Mott the Hoople and Bad Company? I mean, there you have it. I know. He fucking takes off his guitar, dude, lays it down in front of David Gilmore, bro, fucking bows, shakes his hand, shakes his head simultaneously, mumbling to himself, oh my God, turns around and walks off the stage. David Gilmore turns around, because David just blew him away to where it was like, oh my God, I, I cannot play another note, is exactly what Mick Rouse was thinking. That's exactly the respect he paid. I cannot pick up my guitar again. He fucking laid down his guitar, shook his head, shook Gilly's hand, turned around, walked off the stage, just like blown away, just like everyone in the whole fucking place was blown away. His own musicians were blown away, dude. Gilmore turned around, dude, came to the edge of the stage, dude, bolted out the insane fucking, it sounded like a helicopter was landing. I don't know how he got that fucking sound effect, dude. I mean, I know he's got some gimmicks and shit, but this stuff came out of left field, bro. I don't know where this shit came from. I thought a, I thought a fucking helicopter was landing on my head. Fucking boom, fucking Dude, fucking lasers shoot off from behind my head and hit this mirrored reflector below his picks, below his fucking, uh, 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 right below his bottom string, bro. He had this little mirrored reflector. And fucking, then the lasers, synonymous with the fucking helicopter sounds, were machine gunning off of his fucking mirror on his guitar. Oh. It was like, and how fast they were going and how fast they were And you were tripping on acid, fuck. Dude, I was not tripping. I was flipping on acid, and the and and the machine, and it was and there were two there were two lasers coming from either side that were connecting to the same spot on the guitar, and they were both machine guns with little spaces in between, and and the exact speed of the sound of the helicopter was exactly how fast the the the, the, the machine was uh, the the lasers were shooting. Yeah. And then it got faster and faster. <laughs> And this fucking machine, bop, 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 bop. and then he just broke out, cranked on the wall, wall. I just fucking, oh my god, I lost it, I, I lost it. Then I saw him in '87 with Floyd. Oh, sorry, oh, Gillies, dude. And then I told you about Blackmore, bro. Blackmore, fucking, in 1980, 13 years ago smoked, just blazed beyond words, bro. He had, he was possessed, dude. That was not a human being I saw that night. Oh, my God. I can imagine, dude. Seriously. So, I mean, there you have it, bro. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Derek. Yeah. Fuck, I gotta go to practice. Dude, right on, bro. I'll call you later. Okay. Bye. Later.